In this video, we will take a real world AI problem, deep dive into AWS SageMaker, showing step by step how it works and how you can use it throughout your AI lifecycle. Imagine you are an AI engineer working for PetFinder.com, a company that shows you pets that are available for adoption near you. You've been given the task to train and deploy an AI model that in real time based on the recent pet images clicked by a user recommends more pet images based on the same visual features, hence improving the overall adoption rate of the website. You start by running multiple experiments by fetching all the existing images, annotating and training them. When stuck, you ask other senior folks in the organization. But soon you realize there is a problem. You have so many packages and environments scattered all over the place. If you want to run multiple experiments, you'll have to create and manage multiple VMs at a time. You have Jupyter notebooks or code files all over the place and it's hard to revisit and reproduce the results from older experiments again. When these models are sent to production, scaling and monitoring them requires knowledge of other AWS services. This is where AWS SageMaker comes into the picture. In this video, we'll look at how we can use SageMaker for collaboration, training and deployment. Alright, so let's get started. The first on the list is collaboration. As an organization consists of multiple departments and use cases, SageMaker groups together teams using a service called Domain. A domain primarily consists of user profile, a common set of permission assigned to access other AWS services and is given to all users inside a domain. Things like giving access to storage solutions like S3 or other AWS services like Lambda. We have private spaces, a set of different domain apps like Jupyter Notebook, VS Code, that user can spin up along with their own private EBS storage. And lastly, shared spaces, a shared EFS file system storage attached and shared between all the users in the domain can be used for collaborating by sharing and working together on multiple notebooks. One good thing about SageMaker domain is that you can use multiple different coding environments, which they call as applications. You can use your favorite ID like JupyterLab to create multiple notebooks, things like RStudio, Code Editor, giving VS Code like environments and AWS Canvas, a no code solution by AWS for training model and analysis. When you want to launch an application, SageMaker domain gives you the choice to select different VM types. Based on your CPU, RAM or GPU requirements, you can choose any available VM and storage size. SageMaker domain automatically provisions the VM for you attaches the specified EBS storage and runs the application inside the VM. You can then access it in your own browser. But what if you now want to process a bigger chunk of data that needs more RAM or want to do model training that requires a GPU VM? In SageMaker domain, it's a breeze. You simply select the new VM with your required specification and SageMaker will provision the new one. Attach the same EBS block storage so you don't lose any data and runs the application again. This can give us huge cost savings as we are just using the right size VM for the right job. There's no need to do simple analysis on a heavy GPU machine that you set up manually and pay the heavy price of GPU backed VMs. That was it for collaboration. Let's have a look at the next segment of the video, which is what SageMaker excels at, that is training. Now, let's say you're working with data and doing model training in your own domain user profile. What if now you want to train multiple modules at the same time? your VM might be too small for it. Or let's say you want to automate a process where new pet photos keep coming in and you want to pre-process them every day at night. This is where the concept of SageMaker job comes in. You can use jobs to do various tasks for you. Let's say you have your data files in S3 bucket. SageMaker can spin one or many EC2 instances for you. Then load Docker container from Elastic Container Registry, also known as ECR, in all of them. Copy your data to the VM for processing and after processing complete, puts the data back in S3 as well. Afterwards, these VMs are also destroyed. There are different types of jobs in SageMaker. Processing job is used when we want to pre or post process data. In the same way, training job is used to train ML models. Hyperparameter tuning job when we want to run multiple ML models with multiple VMs with slightly different training parameters and get the best trained model from them. And finally, patch transform job is when we want to get model output from a data set. This means running multiple GPU or only CPU VMs and getting the model output in batch. So you might ask, who will create these Docker containers from scratch? Isn't it going to be time consuming? 
Well, actually, SageMaker makes it super easy to create these jobs and deal with containers in general. We have three types of containers. Built-in algorithm containers are the common algorithms in libraries like XGBoost, K-Means, already containerized by SageMaker. You just have to provide your data in a fixed format and SageMaker will take care of the rest. There's no code involved here. Script mode is when you use some pre-built containers with your own code. SageMaker will take care of managing the infrastructure for you. This is the most popular setup and many libraries and frameworks such as PyTorch, Hugging Face specifically provide their official Docker containers made for SageMaker. And lastly, if your use case doesn't fit in any of this, you can follow the SageMaker guidelines and bring your own container by building it from scratch. Let's dive deeper into how you can use script mode and how it works under the hood. Let's say for my pet finder company, I have all the images of pets in an S3 bucket. I want to run the training using the official hugging face public Docker image created for SageMaker. First, you can write your code to do training anywhere from your personal laptop or SageMaker domains to Lab. It doesn't matter. Once we write the training code, we use the official Python package called SageMaker to create a training job configuration. When we run the configuration, the SageMaker package does two things. First, takes our whole code and puts it in a mentioned S3 bucket. And second, submits the whole job configuration settings to SageMaker by calling its API to start the training. SageMaker then provisions the EC2 VM. Then from S3, the dataset images and code is loaded to the VM. A Docker container is pulled from the ECR of Hugging Face AWS account. Container is attached with the local storage having access to the code and data. Container is also attached with the GPU. Our given environment variables are loaded. If you have given a requirements.txt file, it also installs the additional packages inside the Docker container. Note that many of the Hugging Face packages in many libraries are already installed in Docker because we are using the official image. Finally, our training starts by running the train.py file which was uploaded before. During training, we send logs and VM hardware metrics to CloudWatch. After training completes, we push the final model output checkpoints back to S3. SageMaker then discards the VM and the training completes. This was the whole end-to-end -end process of training in SageMaker. But what if we have to run multiple jobs that run one after the other? Like first, I want to do data processing on a small VM, then train on a GPU VM, and finally do batch process using my model in multiple CPU VMs to get all the recommendation output for multiple users. This is where SageMaker pipelines comes into picture. In SageMaker pipelines, you can combine and run multiple jobs whose output depend on each other. SageMaker automatically figures out the dependency and creates an acyclic graph for your pipeline. It then runs all these set of jobs for you. Now that you can automate your use case end to end, you can also trigger the pipeline again and also run them automatically using triggers like event bridge. You can also define global variables in pipeline, which you can mention while running pipeline. In this way, you can simply change the S3 bucket or the VM to run the pipeline on or inject different environment variables in the code, making these pipelines highly customizable at runtime. All right, that was it for training. By now we have created our models that works. Now is the time to finally discuss about deployment and put our models to production so it can be used by thousands of users worldwide. But wait, deployment has its own issues. We cannot simply put our servers to the end user. We have to make sure the server is healthy and doesn't crash with more users joining in. To fix this, we have to create a load balancer and add more servers and evenly distribute the load to them. Also to save on cost, we have to increase or decrease their count based on the user traffic. This needs complex tooling to implement. As you might have guessed, SageMaker offers this as well with multiple options to choose from. In SageMaker real-time inference, you can simply tell SageMaker to scale up and down based on user traffic. In the back, SageMaker provisions the VM, puts your model checkpoint and code in the VM and pulls the Docker container for inference and then runs the web server. There is also a SageMaker serverless inference mode where there is auto scaling based on user traffic and you only pay for the number of incoming requests and compute used. So if there are zero users, there is no physical server running in the background. Pretty cool, right? But there are some caveats. The Docker container can only be a maximum of 10 GB in size and a maximum of up to 6 GB of RAM can be assigned to it. The request should be processed in 60 seconds max and there is no support for GPU VMs. 
All right, the last deployment type is asynchronous inference. In this, we first upload the data in S3, call the SageMaker async endpoint, SageMaker processes our input data in an async manner, and when done, it puts the output data back to S3. You can continuously check for output data in the S3 bucket location, or you can also subscribe to AWS SNS notification service, and you get notified when the data is processed and ready in S3. And that was all for deployment. We have successfully covered all the three major aspects of SageMaker in depth. That's it for this video. Just like this, we are coming with detailed tutorials of major Gen AI tools and frameworks in the upcoming videos. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel to not miss an update.